Pico Century for 630, sorry, uh, Spirit of 76 Locomotive. Uh, this engine was sent in uh, anonymously from somebody in a box with a whole bunch of other locomotives. I know absolutely nothing about it other than that it doesn't run, unfortunately. Uh, so we're going to be trying to fix it live here today, which is not something I do terribly often. No idea how this is going to go. Uh, these old Tycos tend to be fairly easy to work on, so I think it's got a pretty good chance, but uh, there's only one way to find out. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to uh, bring this thing over to the track, I'll test it out a little bit there, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Hold on a moment, everyone. Uh, repair off the vat, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just got a few messages. Anyway, a whole bunch of people are joining in. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I, I actually got a message from uh, Chris of Go VR Go Home. Uh, I thought he might have been hosting a live stream uh, this evening. Uh, I think the message might have just been a coincidence. But on June 4th, at some point, uh, I guess there's some sort of an event being hosted. If he's in here right now, Chris, feel free to promote that. Anyway, uh, on with the repair. I just don't want to be sabotaging anybody's live streams. So we're going to take this thing over to the track. We're going to uh, see what it does. I did already test this at some point. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, figure out what it's doing and then we'll go from there. Let's begin. So I'll just set the dandy thing right up on the track. So I've got 12 volts going into the track. And you can see we do have a bit of a light, which is a good sign. That means that the electrical system is working to some extent. But we're not hearing any humming. The thing doesn't seem to want to go. I'll give it a little more power here. Sometimes that will get these things going, but... Yeah, I actually am hearing some stuff from the motor. The electrical system is just not working great. So it's definitely going to need some cleaning, maybe some uh, lubrication, but... It's actually not a bad start despite how it looks. So let's haul this thing back over to the workbench and see if we can fix whatever is going on with it. It's not really the best way. Optimally, you want to take the whole assembly out first, but I figure we'll just have a look inside to see what we're up against. This all looks uh, really clean, actually. I'm not sure if maybe you're supposed to remove the coupler before doing this part. But let's see if we can just kind of wiggle it out. I don't know. Let's get the rest of this thing out. So the only thing I don't like about these larger Tyco engines is you've actually got clips here and here. Makes these things a lot more difficult to disassemble in comparison to like the small Tyco F units. Let's try to kind of wiggle that out.
Oh, guess we got that out. And there's the whole motor assembly. You can see right here, it's definitely not seized, so that's all good. Harrison, what are your opinions on cheese? Uh, it's fine as an ingredient. I don't judge anybody for liking it, but personally, I think just on its own, it's vile stuff. It, the texture's bad, the taste is bad, the smell's bad. Overall, it's, uh, it's a force of evil, in my opinion. Again, I don't judge anybody for liking it, though. Uh, now, back to the restoration. Let's see if we can get the pivot gear up. I, I don't know if we really need to lift this part or not. Because, I mean, optimally you would want to uh, clean under here, but uh, in this case it all seems to be turning right, so maybe we'll just add some fresh oil to it. I don't know. I think we should remove this plate, though. Who got the locomotive in the last video? I don't know yet. I haven't done the draw for it. Um, a lot of people did comment uh, on that video, though. I think it got 490 comments, certainly more than usual. So uh, I feel like a good amount of those were probably to enter the uh, contest. So there's, uh, I guess you got a 1 in 490 chance of uh, winning it. Ever heard of the Denver South Park and Pacific? No, I have not heard of that railroad. What Tyco unit is this? It's a uh, Spirit of 76 uh, 630, I believe. Got to be pretty careful lifting this up because uh, there are springs behind it, of course. And if I'm not careful, I'm going to lose those. And most of this live stream will be taken up by me uh, crawling around on the floor hunting for them. All right. Well, here we are inside. Things are looking really good. Uh, the first thing I've noticed is that the springs are in terrific shape. If these are quite compressed, that's very bad news because it likely means the motor is overheated. So since these are in good shape, that's usually a good sign that the motor is healthy. And uh, it's also uh, just good because obviously if the springs were all messed up, you'd need to uh, replace them. So not bad. Brushes look to be good. Commutator is definitely going to need some cleaning, but it's far from the worst I've seen. So now we're going to uh, clean out this whole component right here. I'm just going to look for a little pick to do that. Do the wheels move? On the back, they're freewheeling. On the front, they're geared. You can turn them manually, but it's really hard on the gearbox. And you can only do that on uh, certain engines. On most modern engines, they have a worm gear, and you can't turn the wheels manually. Uh, first time in a while I've managed to get on one of these streams. Hey, Harrison. Welcome to the live stream. Can you even rent a vehicle? I'm not old enough to rent a vehicle. Apparently, you need to be 25 to rent one of those. Uh, all right. How long ago did you get the Spirit of 76? I don't I don't know when, this, when the box showed up. But, um... I don't know, it's been it's within the last couple months. This is a fairly new to the collection engine. So we're going to clean this uh, motor out here. Uh, basically, you always need to clean out the little gaps between these metal plates. It doesn't really matter what motor you're working on. It's very important to do this because if you don't, uh, little bits of the brushes, carbon, will uh, get caught between them. And it will start to burn. And uh, this will destroy your commutator. And it will also make the motor less efficient. And... It's not good for anything, so uh, always uh, make sure of that. Now, I'm 
just gonna look for uh, my uh, fiberglass pencil so we can actually uh, polish the commutator up and then we can pretty much start reassembling the uh, motor from there, which will be nice. Uh, Easy Track, Unitrack, or Snapchat, or Snapchat, Snaptrack, which is your favorite? Uh, I haven't had experience with Unitrack. I've heard really good things about it though, so uh, I don't think it's bad. Easy track is okay. I mean, hey, if you're a beginner and you just need a, a loop of track, it will get the job done, but it's far from my favorite. It has a lot of flaws, in my opinion, from everything from the rail joiners themselves to the roadbed, but it's it's okay. Uh, if you're talking about Atlas Snap Track, it's fine. I mean, you need to nail it down, otherwise the rail joiners are just going to get worn out and it's not going to work too well. But uh, a lot of my layout uses Atlas Snap Track, and honestly, it works fine. Now, I thought I had my fiberglass pencil right here. That's no, right here. All right. What's the engine in the background? It's a uh, Canadian Pacific Royal Hudson. Well, I don't know if it's a Royal Hudson, but yeah. So we're just going to polish this up. It's probably one of the most satisfying parts of any repair. Oh, that looks quite a bit better. I think we're ready to start reassembling the motor now. Canadian Behavior, welcome to the live stream. Uh, controller Packers, it's been a while since I've caught a restoration on a live gland to see one again. Hey Harrison, what is the locomotive with the most pulling power in your fleet? It's either one of my Rapido engines, my uh, Rapido Via locomotives. Those things are really powerful just because they're well designed. Um... Second would probably be my 1950s Varney locomotive with the uh, Lindsay uh, Super Motor, which is a seven pole. And the whole engine's made out of lead, so it weighs a ton. I'm sure if I cleaned and lubricated that engine, got it in uh, proper working order, it could probably pull over 60 cars. It's very, very powerful. Have any heritage units? I don't have any uh, heritage units now seen a couple in real life though that's always a treat so now we're gonna try to get these springs and brushes and what have you back inside the motor this is always the most kind of pain in the neck part of working on these Tycos I'm not entirely sure what we should do in this case I guess since they seem to be sticking to the springs pretty well, maybe just plant them in there and hope for the best. I don't know. What scale is your main layout? Most of my uh, layout is HO. I have a small uh, N scale layout and uh, a loop of O scale track, but pretty much everything else is HO. Hey, SMTA, I can't believe how large the channel has gotten. I remember when I subscribed to you, you were at 750 subscribers. I'm amazed, too. Uh, I don't know what changed over the last two years, but, um, yeah, the support from the community has just been incredible. And uh, it's really nice to see uh, people like you, you know, people who have been subscribed for a while, still uh, sticking around all these years later. I'm going to clean up this uh, brush right here a little bit with the uh, fiberglass pencil. This is not quite as important as cleaning the commutator, in my opinion, because you know, as these rotate, they kind of clean themselves to some extent. But whatever. If we want to do this thing right, I guess that's what we should be doing. I just dropped that on the floor, didn't I? Ah, that was lucky. I didn't actually lose it, though. So... Uh, dumb luck has saved me once, but I'm not counting on it to do so again. Just 
And we get this thing right on top of the spring, and then we just need to kind of lower the motor right on top of that. And what you'd want to do, when this thing came from the factory, you'd remove this plate and uh, the little metal parts behind it, and, you know, you'd lower all the parts in, but unfortunately, in a lot of cases, if you try to do that, you'll just end up breaking the parts. Alrighty, folks. <laughs> Already dropping the motor. This part is so tricky. So you can see the brushes and everything. They're just off by a little bit. We just need to kind of wiggle them in there. I'm kind of wondering if I grab a pick, if I can just sort of push them into place. Once we get this closed, things should be a lot easier. Oh. I can't tell if I just made that better or not. That's too large. We might have done that correctly. I'm gonna put a screw in. We'll uh, connect some leads up to the motor here and we'll say it, uh, we'll see if it fires up or not. I mean, that will tell us whether or not that was done correctly or not. Looks like I wasn't paying attention when I took the motor apart. I don't know where I put the uh, screws. Oh well, we'll just take this one for now and put it in there. I just don't want this plate to come back up and cause problems. <laughs> yeah, I've lost the head to this. I don't know. Don't torque it too much. Yeah, it's probably not the correct length. Of course, I could just go digging through my spare parts bin and find one of a million different Tyco blocks, which probably use the same size. I just don't know where I put those two screws. Ay, ay, ay. This is part of the reason I don't do these uh, repairs live is because this is the type of stuff that goes on uh, behind the scenes and through the magic of editing. I don't have to show 20 minutes of me looking through for uh, a couple screws I lost. So this is why, everyone, if you're uh, smart, like I'm not, you uh, put everything in your parts parts pan and you don't have to worry about this kind of thing. Now, let's see, I've got to have some sort of a screw here to put in solve this little problem. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> That's exactly it. I really hope the magnets on the motor didn't pick up those screws and they're inside the block.
Wow, I don't seem to have spares. Hope you fix it. Organization helps. Yeah, that's a very good point. Unfortunately, I uh, don't have such a thing. But I do have uh, random miscellaneous spare parts, so we're going to try to get one of those in there. And Just need something to hold this in place. That's really all I need. We'll find those parts eventually, but right on. So now we can actually test the motor, see if I've done at least one thing right, and then we'll we'll go from there. I'm just gonna get my uh, controller plugged in, and then uh, we'll see where we go. Uh, JC's Trains and Games says, "Feel you, man. I was working on my Tyco Manoa 040 the other day, and somehow misplaced the shell. Looked for it for ten minutes, only to realize I left it next to my screwdriver set. And if I had a nickel for every time I've, time I've done something along those lines." Randall Elson, welcome to the live stream. So here we've got some power. I always uh, spark the wires, that way you know power is actually getting to them, because sometimes, you know, you got a broken wire, something like that. It's just a reliable way of knowing that power is getting to the motor, because there have been times where I've tried to test something like this, and it turns out maybe one of the wires is come loose from the terminal or something like that and I thought there's been something wrong with the locomotive done a bunch of work on it only to realize it was okay now moment of truth that was definitely running for uh, a hot minute there and then it stopped so like I, I, I guess I got all the parts and let's try it again here Yeah, that's no good. What did what happened? It, it was it was just running fine. Oh, the joys of working on power torques. Maybe I over torqued the, the screw here. It's putting pressure. It shouldn't be. Let's try it again. I don't really want to open this up again. Oh, I forgot to put the power back on. Here we go. Well. You know, it doesn't sound terribly healthy, but it's it's running. So I think I got all the parts back in correctly. We're gonna give it some oil, see if that loosens everything up. I think there's a strong likelihood that that could be why this isn't working properly. Let's give it a healthy amount there. some down there too yeah this is already loosening up so much and we could put some oil on this bearing and I get countless comments saying oh the reason your old Tyco power torques are squeaky it's because of this bearing I'm very hesitant to put oil here because I find in a lot of cases what happens is the oil will actually wick down onto the commutator and start to burn, which will eventually destroy it. There's not a ton of friction there to begin with, so. Is it impossible that some of the noise is coming from there? Um, certainly not very well. Could be, but is it worth potentially wrecking the commutator? I'm not so sure. Either way, let's see if uh, giving it that oil fixed it up. Oh yeah, that's way better. Check this out. This 
sounds like it just rolled off the factory line in 1976. What oil do you recommend? Um, I'm not sponsored or anything like that from LaBelle. I find their products are actually quite expensive, maybe even, dare I say, a bit overpriced, but uh, they works fine. It's a pretty good product. Uh, I've heard of some people using, uh, I think it's called Super Grease or something like that. Um, you can kind of use what you want, but this is a proper modeling manu you know, manufacturer. If you're working on a high-end locomotive, I highly recommend you go with a high-end lubricant. Older stuff like this, you can eh, kind of work with what you got. Pretty much, you could even use a tiny bit of 3-in-1 oil if you wanted. Don't ever use WD-40, though. That's probably the... Uh, one piece of advice I have, WD-40, you know, if you need to get something unstuck, it, it will get the job done, but it is a really poor lubricant, and it dries out ridiculously quickly. So that's the only one I would probably say to avoid. Some people also use uh, ATF for automatic transmission fluid, and I could see that working very well. I mean, it's a well-engineered fluid, and it's designed to work with gears, particularly metal ones, so... You know, if you uh, already have some ATF on uh, hand, might not be a bad way. What about 3-in-1? 3-in-1 oil is fine. It's definitely a much better lubricant than WD-40. I use 3-in-1 oil for all my fans, and I don't uh, subscribe to this idea, too, that it harms plastic components. I mean, it comes in a plastic bottle. It's not impossible. Maybe there are some plastics that are not compatible with it, but... Um, as long as you're changing your oil regularly and you're making sure dust and hair doesn't get in the gearbox, I think you'll be okay, especially on older engines. I, I wouldn't put three-in-one oil in one of my Rapido engines, but an old Tyco engine like this, a little bit, it, it will be okay. Just don't ever over-lubricate. That's another important thing. Gun oil work. I, I don't have... Um, a lot of experience with those types of lubricants, so I couldn't say. I mean, if they're meant for working with metal parts, probably. The thing is, too, though, it's like, if you're working on an antique locomotive, like, you know, a River Rossi Hiawatha, something along those lines, you know, you might want to work with something uh, high-end, but if you're working on a power torque you bought for $15 in a junk bin, are you going to want to put high-end lubricants in it? Hey, it's up to you. If it has sentimental value, maybe you should, but if it's just an old restoration project, I wouldn't sink too much into it. I use air tool oil. It's 10 weight. Air tool oil. Huh. DB Tech, happy birthday. Thank you. Watch oil slash clock oil. I suspect that would work very well. Of course, you know, you can always play around with different lubricants, see what works best. If it performs well, it's probably good. How long did the fiberglass pens last? I mean, it all depends on what you use them on. How much. I use this one pretty frequently. It usually takes a few months before I need to change it. I use some gear oil that my local train store found works good. They have dubbed it Magic Mystery Oil, or the Magic Mystery Oil. I thought that for a second that was a reference to Marvel Mystery Oil.
I need to get a fiberglass pencil for some type of older engines I have. It's a great tool. I didn't really realize I needed one so much until I got one. Uh, shout out to DB Tech. He's in the comments somewhere here. He's actually the one who sent this original one in. But uh, yeah, it's a dandy little tool for cleaning up little electrical components and things of the sort. Just gonna look, I have a cloth down here. I'm just gonna clean these parts up a bit just cause there's a little bit of old grease on them. I'll use the oil itself as a parts cleaner. That's more like it. Uh, don't use steel wool. You might get little bits of metal in your motor. Yes, I learned that the hard way years ago back when I was like 10 or 12 I was using steel wool on uh, Parts of my track which was really dumb um, But I was having a lot of problems with uh, especially some of my older engines with open uh, gearboxes Because that's exactly what happened the magnets of the motor would attract the steel shavings up They'd get drawn into the gearbox and then they would mess all sorts of things up, especially when they got in the commutator. So yeah, uh, steel wool and model trains, don't ever let them cross paths. Nothing good will come of it. Oh my goodness, uh, Matt New Haven Model Railroad, thank you so much for the super chat. That's ridiculously generous. Happy birthday, Harrison. I knew it would run. Here's to you. Well, thank you so much, Matt. Um, the engine's not running yet. We got the motor turning over. I don't want to uh, call any... Uh, victories quite just yet but it is promising but yeah thank you so much for the uh, super chat david z to g scale nice to see you doing a repair live once again harrison thank you welcome to the live stream by the way uh, david i didn't notice you uh, join in here earlier uh thomas drew thank you for the super chat Where do you get your engines, SMT? Whole variety of places, train shows, train shops. Uh, some of them are sent in by uh, viewers, some of whom are actually watching right now. And uh, of course there's always eBay. It's usually my last resort, I would say, to buying stuff, but it is always an option. So we've got these wheel sets mostly cleaned up, but uh, they're not as good as they could be. That one's actually not the worst, but they're just kind of grimy. So I'm going to take this. This is a uh, track cleaning tool. You can buy these at your local train store, off the internet, wherever you can find them. And uh, I'm just going to use this to uh, clean up the wheels. Alternatively, you could use a fiberglass pencil. It will eventually do the same job. It's just not quite as abrasive as the uh, track cleaning tool, so... I often resort to this just because it gets the job done a little bit faster. You notice too, I'm letting this wheel turn ever so slightly in my hands just so that it's actually slowly rotating. It's hard to see on camera, but this wheel is turning just a tiny bit. That's going to work way better now. Hey, SMT, did you know about the 2102 test run? I have not heard about that, no. I have to get going, Harrison. Thank you so much for stopping in, uh, JC's Trains. Where should I get my trains if I don't have a ton of money to spend? Okay, I know train shows are not very frequent, but if you know of any in your area where you're willing to drive a little bit, that's definitely where you're going to get the best deals. Because people at train shows, in some cases, they just want to get rid of stuff. They're not looking to make a lot of money, if any. They just want to offload what they have. Um, sometimes train stores have okay deals. That's a lot more rare, though. It really depends on the store. And then every once in a blue moon, you will get a good deal on something like eBay. But again, I find with shipping and everything else, in most cases, eBay is not the most economical way. 
it's probably not as bad if you're in the United States. I'm in Canada, so with the border, uh, with the exchange rate, it's not so great. It's probably not as bad there, but yeah. Yard sales, yeah, yard sales are always an option. Of course, it's a little more hit or miss than a train show because uh, you, you have to probably go to a thousand of them. You never know which or which not will have model trains, but uh, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty big fan of this channel called uh, Musty One or something. I don't know, it's an uh, automotive channel from New Hampshire, and uh, he does these videos of going to uh, yard sales every spring, and uh, every once in a while you do see a train set on his channel, so that is an option. Thrift shops, yep. Similar to yard sales, there's always a chance. Tips on starting my layout. Figure out how much space you have, figure out what your budget is, and then sky's the limit. Write down a big list of all the things you want, and uh, go from there. Don't limit yourself. There are a lot of people out there that will suggest that you pick a place and uh, a time and everything that your layout takes place. And if you really like the historic aspects of model railroading, you know, fill your boots with that. But if you're just looking to have some fun with some model trains, I'd chuck those rules out the window and just start building your layout. But at least make a list of the things you want. And of course, you don't have to add 100% of the things you put on your list. You can edit it or you can add certain things on in the future. But figure out what it is you want and uh, start just going from there. Keep in mind, too, you can always start all over because the years in the hobby can attest. Your first layout is not your last, um, you know. Uh, my layout is similar to what I started with, but I've renovated it countless times. There are some people that just start all over. They build a completely new layout from scratch because the truth is, you know, as you get into model railroading, you get more experienced and um, you can start to do better work faster. So, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, yeah, don't limit yourself. Have fun with it. So we've pretty much got this whole drive back together. Um, in my opinion, things are looking pretty good. We know that the motor turns over. We got everything uh, nice and oiled. So I guess we'll throw this back on. I'll clean the rear truck too, because that undoubtedly needs to be serviced. But um, other than that, at the moment, things are not looking bad for the future of this engine. I also need to find the motor mounting screws because I've only got one aftermarket screw in there right now by aftermarket i mean i found it in my parts bin check the camera uh-oh okay i'm gonna try uh changing this around video working black screen I don't know what causes this problem, but uh, this is not the first time this has happened. Okay, I'm going to try zoomed in too far. Your camera shut off. Unzoom. I didn't touch the zoom. Oh, boy. I haven't had this problem happen in a long time. I thought this was... Um, did that fix it? We can hear you. We have picture. You're back. Okay. So here's a little tip for anybody doing live streams. This has worked a couple times and this problem's occurred. Uh, try applying special effects to your lens with the uh, little uh, magic wand effect. For some reason, that seems to reset the camera. I don't know why, but... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that that fixed it. I'm sorry I don't know what happened, folks, but, uh, yeah, weird problems. Anyway, back to the live stream.
Well, I got the camera working again. Now I just need to uh, find my tools and hopefully we can get this locomotive working again too. And then uh, the whole live stream should be good. The part of this tool which I lost a little bit, it's probably where the uh, two screws I lost are. Oh, it looks like we've got another super chat from Fort Constant Chief. Uh, what track cleaning routine? How do you handle fully enclosed tunnels like the uh, new linking section, the two layouts? Uh, I uh, don't take track cleaning as seriously as I should. Usually I just use uh, one of these or some uh, rubbing alcohol and uh, paper towel. I find that that generally gets the job done. Uh, for a tunnel section, Unless you have a ridiculously long tunnel, I don't find that they're uh, too big a problem because uh, if the portals are wide enough, you just reach in there and you just run this up and down it a few times. And the, uh, and the job's all sorted out. Now... Pencil erasers make pretty good track cleaners. I've tried those before. Personally, I don't find they're too effective, but uh, you're not the first person to have said that. What classic shows do you watch? It depends how far you're going back, but uh, if you say the 90s, the Red Green Show and Frasier, uh, further back. Gilligan's Island is a terrific show. That's uh, that's more of a classic one. I know I'm forgetting some. Well, if I can't find uh, a proper screwdriver, I might just end up finding some new screws and then we can be done with this whole Tyco thing after all. one Looks like a fit to me. Oh, that works quite nicely. And another one. Have you ever watched Malcolm in the Middle? Malcolm in the Middle is a fantastic show. I loved watching that years ago. You're great at fixing locomotives. Who taught you? I was never uh, really taught by anybody. Um, when I was younger, I just started kind of tinkering around with these locomotives and uh, sort of figured it out. I'd say, though, I've definitely improved a ton on it, just being 
uh, in the community and making videos because the amount of advice I get from uh, people watching is just immense. Wow. Yeah, that looks like something that will fit. North American Trains, welcome. How are you doing this evening? For a second, I thought I had made a very crucial mistake because on some of these other Tyco locomotives, the power torques, you actually have to uh, remove this whole component right here. But luckily on uh, this design, the part just fits right over the wires. So that's, uh, that's all good. night. SMTM, starting a model railroading channel, what would you recommend as content to start off with? Well, I think my main piece of advice would be if there is something in the hobby that you like, make it about that. If you like doing scenery, make videos about scenery. Because, uh, like, a big part of this channel is fixing up trains, and that's probably my favorite thing in the hobby. So I think that that's an important part. But my uh, Another piece of advice I would have for any YouTube channel out there is be sure to keep all your content in, uh, I guess, a similar category. A lot of people will mix different types of content, like they'll mix cooking and go-karts and things like that, and it's all good. It's just that, you know, if you upload a video about go-karts one day and a video about cooking the next, the people who are into the go-karts are going to be angry about the cooking and vice versa. So, it's the only real piece of advice I'd say I have. Is a round tray magnetic? Check the underside. It is magnetic. I didn't see the screws, though. Well, maybe those are the original screws. I was looking for the uh, blackened kind. But those might have been them. Oops. Oh, well. This rear one doesn't even have any screws, so that's no problem. underneath everybody's laughing about the screws being under that dish yeah i don't know i i should have had a closer look but usually the type of screws like they're the same color like they look more like that you know yes they really don't make these the easiest things to work on Crap. Yeah, I'm just gonna pull the wheels out. We don't need to remove the cover all the way. So there's not much that we have to do on these rear sets of wheels. Just really need to clean the grease and stuff off of them. And uh, more importantly, get the oxidization off. And after that, we'll reassemble this thing, and if we're really lucky, this engine will run. Casey Hudson, talk about a magnetic tray. I'm just happy to have a magnetic screwdriver. Yeah, they can be helpful.
I just like lo noisy locomotives, even ones with sound. Yeah, I kind of get that. It's nice having some really quiet engines, at least a couple of them. Especially if you like running your model trains late at night and there are other people in the same house. They'll appreciate the quiet trains too. Have you ever put a double drive in a Tyco locomotive? I haven't tried that before, but I think it'd be fairly easy to. It'd be a fun thing to, uh, to play around with. I'll just try to get some of this old grease off. Oh, that reminds me, I'm still waiting for the Discord server link. The Discord server link. I don't know if Canadian Behavior is still in here, but he would have it, because he's the uh, server operator, actually. Everybody's saying America, because this is uh, the spirit of 76. You have a Discord server. There is an SMT mainline Discord server. Um, I'm not the one who runs it or operates it. But it does exist, yeah. Try Bewitch TV series, Dream, I Dream of Genie, Soap TV series, Beverly Hillbillies, Hogan Heroes, Andy Griffin. Uh, I've never seen uh, Soap, Beverly Hillbillies, or Hogan Heroes in the Andy Griffin show, but I have seen uh, Bewitched and I Dream of Genie, both uh, classics that uh, I'd watch as a kid at the... Uh, Cottage up in Maine. Sort of like a tradition because we have no Wi Fi out there. So, if you want to put the TV on, you better be throwing a disc in the machine. Not sure if there's a correct way to uh, reinstall this. Something's not quite right about that. I think I've got it backwards. And <laughs> now I've got one of the wheels backwards. Okay, I think we've done it. Let's bring this thing over to the track and see if it works now. Great job, lol. Putting power in the track. Oh, oh, 
This is looking good. Well, it was for a second there. Yeah. i just readjust the camera here, folks. Well, I don't know what all of you think, but I'd call that a runner. So with that, I'd like to say serenity. That's yeah, pretty good. I'll let it do a couple more uh, laps just to kind of break in, but that's yeah, honestly a lot better than I was expecting, frankly. This was certainly not the most thorough uh, job I've ever done, but yeah trying to uh, keep these things kind of timely for the live streams. Is the stream over already? I don't know if it's over, but I yeah, did manage to get an engine running, so I'm calling that a success. Let's see uh, what the low speed is like. Always a telltale sign of just how healthy an engine is. I'll try to get into a bit of a better spot for the camera to see. For a Tyco Power Torque, like this thing is cogging really bad, but it hasn't actually stopped, it's still moving. Well, I think it was for a second there. It might have just kicked out. No, actually, it's still moving. You see that? Wow, this might be the best running uh, power torque I have in my collection. Check out the reverse. Seems pretty good. Ultra low speed, yeah, I mean, it's it's got a three pole in it. It's never gonna perform the best, but it's not stalling. That's really what these tests are kind of looking for. So yeah, hook it up to some American freight cars. All right. Okay, it doesn't have a back coupler. It does have a front one though, so we'll just run it backwards. Okay, the coupling height might be uh, a little off there too. Hold on. There we go. See if we can get some kind of rail fanning type shots here. Controller Packers! Thank you so much for the super chat.
What are the green cars? Uh, the uh, Bombardier bi-level coaches in the Go Transit paint scheme. Unfortunately, this glass kind of ruins the shot a little bit, but. Go Veer, go home. Welcome to the live stream. Uh, Joella, that is awesome to see it pulling some G rolling stock. Very cool, yeah. Who won the giveaway? Uh, I haven't done the draw yet. What's the current condition of the River Rossi Iowatha? Uh, it's okay. I was running it for the 50,000 subscribers special uh, about a month and a bit ago. How do I enter? Uh, so just comment on the last video. Wig Wag Workshop, welcome to the live stream. How fast can these trains get? Uh, this is about top speed. That's top speed right there. Certainly not slow, but far from the fastest I own. Uh, when will you choose who gets the giveaway? I don't know yet. I'll just uh, probably put everybody's comments in one of those random YouTube comment pickers and uh, announce it in some future videos. It's a pretty casual giveaway. I just thought it would be fun because I saw that locomotive at the train show and I was kind of like, darn, like that's a pretty nice locomotive. They don't really want much for it. I don't need it for the collection. I don't really want it for the collection. And I just got the idea. I'll buy this engine and give it away to a subscriber. Somebody will like it. And so it is such. Do you have the seven... Spirit of 76 Caboose, I believe I do somewhere, actually. Let's have a look for it. Maybe tighten up this uh, tripod, it's shaking a lot. I'm like 90% sure I have the Spirit of 76 Caboose. Of course, it could always be in storage somewhere else. There's the uh, Canadiana version. Oh, okay, I found it. It's right back here. What a beauty. I see both my gifts, yes. Now, unfortunately, uh, these cars all have knuckle couplers, so. Can't really hook it on there, but I'll just disconnect the cars and we'll run it around for a lap with the caboose. And then I think we'll call it a night for this live stream because frankly we completed what the goal was, which is getting this engine going. So let's get these cars off the main line. Look at that. I didn't even realize the power was on slightly. It's still going. Mint.
So unfortunately there appears to have been uh, a minor derailment. I joined at the perfect time. Yeah, just when we got the engine going and uh, derailed the train. Have you received your PJ box in the mail yet? Okay, so the other day I went out to run some errands and uh, I go down to the post office box and lo and behold, there's a whole bunch of uh, certificates for the, uh, for things that have arrived in the mail. So I go up to the counter. Sorry, sir, we're closed. So I have to head out in uh, the next couple days and bring those all back to the store. That way I can go retrieve whatever's in there, but I suspect so. I'm pretty sure they were still open. I think they were supposed to close in a few minutes, but I swear sometimes people are just lazy and they're just saying the place is closed just so that they don't have to, I don't know, turn their computer back on or something. Who knows? Doing it for their own sake when it takes a few minutes. Yeah, exactly. It was probably like 10 minutes to closing, and it's like, uh, I don't see any customers around here. I'll just shut everything down. And then I wander up there. They're just like, oh, crap. I don't want to deal with this guy. I'll just say we're closed. Well, there we go. Learned anything about the Hornby locomotive you picked up in the last video? I haven't uh, done anything with it so far. As a matter of fact, I haven't really worked on any of the uh, locomotives at all. The only thing I... I was uh, playing around with this thing uh, this morning. Just running it around a little bit. I can't decide if I want to keep this engine or sell it. It's a pretty nice little uh, locomotive. I just don't know if it fits in with the collection or not. Um, I think I have the entire train for that, so I'm gonna think about that one. When do power torque motors quit working within a week? They're just not a very well built or well designed uh, brand, unfortunately. They're easy to fix in most cases, though. Go Veer, go home. Don't get me started with Canada Post. I don't need to get me started with Canada Post either. I've got a few stories working with them. It's uh, interesting, but I'm not going to get into that. Anyway, uh, I think I'm going to finish off the live stream right now. I'd like to thank you all so much for joining in. I'm really happy with the results and uh, that we can get this engine going once again. And I hope you all enjoy this... Uh, well, completely unedited did uh, repair. And before I finish off, I'll just read this from Chris Danielle. Power torque mortars quit often times because the pinion gear it works its way loose from the other gears. Yeah, that's a very common problem for sure. Anyway, uh, test room with the new motor. My Bachman GS4. Got to go back to that. All right.